Hello, Miguel from Grumo here, and today I want to showcase a very powerful quiz generation app that uses Glide's OpenAI integration to generate quizzes automatically using artificial intelligence. You can get a copy of this Glide template at grumo.com slash quiz AI. All right, let me show you how this template works. So here we are in the Glide app editor where the template has been created. So when you get this template, you will see exactly this. So we have uh, data, where all the data is stored for the quizzes, the layout where you can design and modify the existing design of this app, and then all the actions that are related to this app, which include actions to manipulate existing quizzes, to add questions, to change question answers, and to also manage the results and submissions by users. Under the layout, you have a main screen where you have three possible ways of generating quizzes automatically using Glide's OpenAI integration. The first one is from a prompt. You can type anything here, any subject, and the app will automatically generate a multiple choice quiz. You can also upload a PDF with a document that you want to be quizzed on or paste a link to any online article to be quizzed on it. For example, a Wikipedia article or any documentation that is online that you want to be quizzed on. The generated quizzes will be stored under a quizzes tab here. And you can see here all the quizzes that have been generated. And we have tons of quizzes which have been automatically categorized also using artificial intelligence. You can see we have engineering, math, music, people, science, software, sports, all kinds of different quizzes that have been generated. Now the quizzes are generated using one of these two prompts. One prompt for generating quizzes from an actual description of the quiz, and the other way is from a PDF or a URL. In this case, the prompt is asking OpenAI to generate a challenging 10 question multiple choice quiz using the provided description. The provided description is the quiz description or topic entered by the user. And we want OpenAI to return the entire quiz as a JSON array. And then we actually give the JSON structure that we want to get back from OpenAI, which is an array in which each item is going to have a question parameter with the actual question and then five possible answers in a sub array. And then we tell OpenAI to mark the correct answer with a one, where it says correct here, make sure that the correct answer is marked as one. And then something similar for quiz generation using a PDF document or from a URL. But in this case, the description of the quiz doesn't come from the user as a prompt, but it comes from the actual document. And then OpenAI will analyze that document and create a multiple choice quiz based on that data. This is extremely powerful if you want to be quizzed on any subject that you want to, either from a website or from an existing document. All right, so now let me demonstrate how to generate quizzes with each of the three options. For example, let's say that we want to generate a 10 question multiple choice quiz on the capitals of the world, okay? So we enter the description or the topic of the quiz, then we click generate quiz. And then we will wait for OpenAI to return the complete quiz. And there we go, a world's capital quiz with a description for the quiz, which was automatically generated based on the questions of the quiz. And then we have here time allotted, it's two minutes and 30 seconds to complete this quiz. This is also automatically generated because I have a default setting that says that I give about 15 seconds per question, but you can also change that. Now let's just start this quiz and see what uh, the quiz is telling us. The capital of uh, Canada is Ottawa, of Australia is Canberra, Japan, uh, Tokyo, Brazil, Brasilia. Um, Moscow of India, New Delhi, South Africa, uh, Johannesburg, Egypt, Alexandria, Italy, Rome, France, Paris. Let's see how I did. And I got eight out of 10. Okay. In 38 seconds. And I'm, and my, uh, wrong results are South Africa, that the correct capital is Pretoria and in Egypt is Cairo. Okay, so there you go, I can see my results here. And all the submissions are stored here and under the top scores. As you can see, 
I'm the only one that has submitted this quiz, therefore I have the top score. And I also can see this in desktop view also. And then let's say I want to edit the quiz, so I just can click on the image to uh, edit it, and I can change the automatically generated quiz title. I can change the image of the quiz, which now is also automatically generated from the pexos.com using the Pexos integration. And then by default, it has a timer. There is no restriction for the attempts, but I could say there's, let's say, maximum three attempts. And then all the questions, let's say I want to edit this, I could just change that. Or let's say that the correct answer in this case was Montreal. So I could uh, switch it to that and you can see how that is changed. Uh, but actually the correct answer is Ottawa. Now, sometimes OpenAI will provide answers that are not exactly correct or the questions are very easy for some reason. You can either delete or edit the question. That's why it's important to have the ability to modify the automatically generated quizzes, okay? So you have a lot of control as to what happens with the quiz after it's automatically generated. Okay, now let's generate a quiz from a PDF. In this case, I'm just, I just went to a website. There is a lot of uh, science papers. In this case, it's called a JSTOR. And I just looked for artificial intelligence papers and journals, and I just downloaded the first one. And we have here a 12 page journal entry. And let's say on artificial intelligence, and we want to be quizzed on this. So all you have to do is upload the PDF file. In this case, it's the first one. We click open. Uh, then the template is going to convert this PDF into plain text. And once that's done, we'll be able to see the generate quiz button. And then we click on it and it will take a while to generate the quiz based on two main parameters. One is the length of the PDF. Of course, if it's, if it's too big, you will run into the context window limitation for the current model, which I'm using right now is GPT-4 Turbo and also based on the number of questions that you want to generate. So let's say right now it works pretty well with up to 15 questions with five possible answers each. If you make it larger than that, you may run into the token limitation. All right, here we have the automatically generated multiple choice quiz from the PDF. We have a link to the original PDF. In this case, we told OpenAI to generate 10 multiple choice questions and that was done automatically and we can click start. And then you can see the questions with a countdown timer as well. And here they are. Okay, so a complete multiple choice quiz generated automatically using OpenAI from a PDF. How powerful is that? And finally, we can do the same thing for any given online article, like a Wikipedia article. But in this case, let me just, since we're using Glide, let's test our Glide knowledge on uh, Glide Actions. So I can simply copy the URL of this documentation page onto our third option, which is entering a URL of an online article. And then we can generate a quiz from this article. And there you go. Here we have a multiple choice quiz created from that URL with an automatically generated title an automatically generated description, the source of the article, and then we can start taking the quiz. And here we have the quiz. What does the button action open link do in Glide? It takes us to a website, which is not a type of native Glide action. Send a slide notification. And I'm just gonna do this really quickly without even looking at it, just so you can see how the quiz works. But basically, you just would answer. You can also you know, change your answers as you go. And you will only get the submit button uh, highlighted for you to submit when you answer all the questions. So obviously, I'm missing some answer here. And now we can see it. We submit it. And we get 3 out of 10. And we can see our results here. There you go. So these are the three ways you can generate a multiple choice quiz automatically using this template. Let me show you another nice feature of this template, which is how all the scores are stored. So if we go here to the desktop mode, you can see all the top scores. And also we can see all the attempts for each of the users. So in this case, Annie has attempted twice this quiz, this Spanish vocabulary quiz. 
And you can see here all the attempts and the maximum score. So that is really nice because you can always attempt this quiz multiple times and it will count the top score of all your attempts as the top overall score when you are comparing yourself to other users that attempted the same quiz. And another interesting feature is that let's say that two users get the same score, in this case, 10 out of 10. Only the user with the fastest time, in this case, Annie, which got 10 out of 10 in 28 seconds, will rank higher because she did get the same score as Peter, but she finished the quiz faster. How cool is that? Now, if you're logged in as the administrator, which in this case, I am logged in as one of the administrators, then you also get to see all the scores that have been submitted in reverse chronological order. And you can also see the results for each of the users. And then you also have access to the settings tab, which allows you to edit the app name and to change the logo of the app and also the actual prompts that are sent to OpenAI to generate the quizzes. Okay, so this is an overview of how the quiz app works. Now, let me dig into how this app works behind the scenes by going to the data tab where you can see all the tables that are being used in this template. Of course, we have a users table where all the users are stored. And then we have a start table, which is only shown the first time a user creates an account to make sure that they complete their profile. Then we have a generate table. This is this uh, table. This is, would be the table that we're using for the generation where we have the three different options. Then we have a quizzes table where all the automatically generated quizzes are stored. And you can see how if we don't give the quiz a name and name is automatically given to the quiz using this AI native column, which is called the generate text. Basically we're saying, give this quiz a name and make sure you don't write the name under quotations, which for some reason, sometimes AI will do. And then use the JSON. So the actual quiz that was generated in JSON format as the source. And the same thing for the description, we're generating automatic description based on the quiz. And then to generate the quiz image, we're using the Pexos integration here, stock photo from uh, text using the Pexos integration. It's not very accurate, so you can use that as a starting point, but then you can always upload your own image for the quiz. Then each quiz is automatically categorized using another AI column that is basically saying, based on the name that was given to the quiz, categorize it under one of all these categories, so music, math, history, work, geography, food, etc. And it actually does a very good job. Uh, then we, we set whether the quiz has a timer, the maximum amount of attempts, and a lot more columns, logic columns. Now, the actual quiz is stored under the JSON column. This is what it comes back from OpenAI. So we can click here and we can see we get the JSON quiz formatted as we requested. So we got an array that contains uh, the question and then the possible answers and then the correct answer is marked with one. Okay, now the most complex part of this template is that because we're storing the entire quiz and its answers inside a JSON object, which is really great to save rows in your database because for example, a 10 question quiz with five possible answers would consume 55 rows. And in this case, instead of 55 rows, we're consuming just one. So it's very powerful. Now, but if you wanna edit the actual questions and answers, because they're stored in a single row inside a JSON object. Well, you have to manipulate that JSON object using a series of computed columns, which I'm going to show you right here. And they're uh, quite involved. And the main reason why is because we have a nested JSON object. So we have a JSON array with just the questions, but then each of the questions has a nested array of possible answers. So this great, it makes it quite complex. So then I'm using a couple of JavaScript columns that based on the mode you are, let's say you're editing the title of a question or you are editing one of the options or deleting one of the options, then we have different modes and you have this code that based on whether you're editing or adding or removing any of the questions or options, will perform a modification on the existing main JSON object that contains the entire quiz and then rewrite it with the modifications made. Okay, 
and the same thing for adding a question or deleting a question. Now, to display the actual questions from the JSON array, we're using two helper tables, one main helper table that contains the questions. In this case, it's a 10 question. So we've uh, extracted each question from the JSON array. Now, the main JSON array, when you load it up, is stored under the currently logged in user row, and we can grab that. Uh, here, for example, so we can see here that the main quiz is grabbed from here from the user profile. And then based on the row ID, we're just grabbing the corresponding value of the title of that question. You can also use a JSON query column if you want to, or a native JavaScript column to perform these actions. But this is already all done for you on this template. Now for all the answers, we need to extract the answers as well, okay? And here what we're doing is extracting the answers for that given question, and that creates another JSON object. And then we use this JSON object to display the options in a single table with all the different options. And then to store the actual responses from each user, we use user-specific columns. Every time a user, let's say, selects an answer, we store the timestamp from when that answer was selected, and we will say that it was selected if the time when it was selected was after the quiz was started. This is a technique to be able to reuse user-specific column to mark something as on or, or off. And then we also have two uh, user-specific columns that are used when you're editing an existing option as well. Then we have a results table where all the results for all the users are stored. A really cool feature here is that the entire quiz is stored as it was when it was submitted. And this is important because if you modify the existing quiz, you don't want the results to be affected. Therefore, you have to store the original quiz to make sure it doesn't affect the results. Okay, we also store when the quiz started and ended, an array with all the responses, which then we can use to display which answers were correct or incorrect. And finally, we have two more tables, one for selects, which are basically drop-down menus, and the overall settings, where we have the prompts and information related to the app itself. All right, so that's an overview of this quiz generation and template. I think it's one of my most powerful templates that I've built that leverages artificial intelligence to generate content automatically. I was very surprised how good is OpenAI at generating quizzes from different sources of data. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. And if you wanna get a copy of this template so you can play with it and learn how Glide works and how to leverage artificial intelligence on your apps, you can go to grumo.com slash Quiz AI to get your own copy. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.